A tutorial on the viewers in Resolve may not seem like the most exciting topic, but there are some incredibly useful tools and features within the viewers that can help you work more efficiently and smartly. Now I was initially going to cover the viewers for each of the pages within Resolve, but as I was preparing for the tutorial, I quickly realized that if I tried to do that, the tutorial would be over two hours long and we don't want to do that. So in this video, we're going to focus on the media page and the options and features for the viewer here. Now keep in mind that a lot of these options or features will translate to some of the other pages. So if you're not interested in the media page, I'd still recommend checking this out and you'll be able to make use of some of what we cover here or a lot of what we cover on the other pages. And in the future, I'll upload specific tutorials for the viewers on the other pages, at least for the cut, the edit, fusion, and color. But let's go ahead and jump right into this. Now, our media page is going to allow us to import and organize our media that we'd like to use in our project. And if we take a look at the media storage area here, we can navigate to any volumes that are available on our system, whether it's internal hard drives, USB drives, network drives, etc. But I've actually saved a location to my favorites down below for this tutorial. So I'm going to click once on that and we can see that we have several files here. And the great thing about the viewer in the media page is that we can preview our files before we even import them into our project. And we can do this simply by hovering horizontally over mm -hmm. our audio and video files and just hovering over an image. Now, by default, when we hover, over a video or audio file, we're going to hear audio being played back. If you'd prefer not to have that behavior, you can press Shift and S to turn that off. So now when I hover or scrub across the thumbnails, that audio will not play back. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this for the rest of the tutorial. And if you notice, when I move away from one of the thumbnails, our viewer goes blank because none of these are actually selected. But if we were to click once on a file, then we can make use of our transport controls down at the bottom here. So I can play, stop, or play in reverse. We can also jump to the last frame with this button here. We can jump to the first frame with this button here. We have also got a jog control here, which we can click and hold and drag left or right to scrub through our video or we could use the jog bar up above by click hold and dragging this playhead throughout our clip and if you notice in the top right corner here we have our playhead position shown as time code so again just being sure that we have a particular clip selected we can then make use of the transport controls down below here now Another thing I want to mention is that if you'd prefer not to have the live preview when you hover on a thumbnail or file, you can come to the options menu in the top right corner of our viewer, and then we can turn that off by clicking. And then now when I hover on a video clip or audio, that's not going to play back in real time as I scrub through this horizontally. But let's come back to the options and turn that back on. And if the live preview is turned off, we can still make use of the transport controls as long as we have the file or the thumbnail selected. And let's actually come back to our options menu here. And we're not going to cover everything, but there are a couple of cool options that we can make use of, like showing our full clip audio waveform. So if I go ahead and select that, then we can see we have a waveform that shows up down below here for our video clip. And we can also access a time code toolbar by clicking here. We can see that that populates at the top of our viewer, but let's go ahead and turn these back off. While hovering over our viewer, we can use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out of our video. We can press Z as in zebra to reset that to the original zoom. And in the upper left corner of our viewer, we can actually click this drop down menu to choose a size by percentage, 25% and so on, actual size. And we can also choose fit, which is the same as pressing Z, which is going to reset it to fit the video within our viewer. 
And if we press Control and F or Option on the Mac and F, we can actually zoom in to full screen for that viewer. And then we can use the space bar to play back uh, or the J, K, and L keys. So L will be play forward, K stop, and J is reverse. To leave the full screen mode, we can press escape or control F to return back as we were. Now let's come back to the bottom where our transport controls are. We have a mute button here. By clicking once, we can mute our audio. If I right click here, we can adjust the audio level. To the left of our volume control, we have a mode button for our viewer. So on our video and image files, you'll notice a film strip icon. And we, when we select or hover on an audio file, then you'll notice that the film strip will then change to a waveform. And if we click on the down arrow here, we can actually make use of annotations. And this is going to be a bit more useful as, after we've actually imported our files into the project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna click, hold and drag to select these and then pull them down into our media pool. We'll go ahead and change our frame rate to match those files. So now I'm gonna click once to select this particular clip. And let's select a frame within here try to find something a bit more interesting, but we'll just go with this. So now coming back to the down arrow, we can click once, change to our annotations. And if you notice at the top here, we now have these tools that show up in the left corner and also take notice of our jog bar here. Right now it's clear, but this first one, we can use this to draw. We this is our stroke. We can change the size of that. And notice that we have this label here because a marker has been added. And in our jog bar, you see this blue box that pops up. This is what contains our annotations for this particular frame. Now we can change the size for our stroke. If I hover on what I've just drawn, notice that the uh, little pen icon changes to an arrow and I can select that and then come to the right hand side and then choose a different color for that annotation. We then have an arrow. So selecting that, I can click hold and drag to add an arrow. Again, if I hover on that, we can change its color. Maybe say this yellow. We next have a line. So I'll select that. And then we have a square. And let's actually change the color of that to the green. So now all of these annotations are going to be contained on this in this marker for this particular frame. Now, if you'd like to keep these annotations, but you don't want to see them or you want to temporarily disable them, we can come up to the options menu, just click on that. And then we can deselect here and that's going to turn those off but notice that our blue marker is still here. So those annotations are still here, but they're just being hidden because of the change that we made within our options menu here. But let's come back and show those marker overlay overlays. If we'd like to completely remove these annotations and the marker, we just wanna be sure that it's highlighted. And then I'm going to press backspace on the QWERTY keyboard. Now you can see that our marker has been removed from our jog bar. Okay, now back in our transport area, all the way to the right, we have a couple of buttons here and this, we can use these to add in and out markers. So our playhead is positioned here. So I'll go ahead and click here. That's gonna add our endpoint. I'm gonna press the space bar to play back just really quickly. And then I'll press here to add our out mark. Now, if I click, hold and drag our playhead to move that out of the way, this is a very short area that I just created but I did that purposely. Um, so what we can do now is right click on our jog bar and we can create sub clip and we also can use Alt B. And once I do that, we have a dialog where we can rename if we'd like, but I'm just gonna leave it on the default. Let's create that. That's then populated here within our media pool. 
And this is going to be a new clip that is just for the specific section that we created with our in and out markers. And also know that we can use I and O on our QWERTY keyboard. I will set our in marker and O will set our out point. But this is our new short clip. And I wanted to make it particularly short just to show that we do have this loop button here. So if I activate that and have this new sub clip that we just created selected, and let's go ahead and play this back. And it's gonna go ahead and loop that clip. But we'll go ahead and turn that back off. Okay guys, and I think that covers everything for the viewer options and features within the media page. And as I said at the beginning of the video, look out for separate videos where we'll be talking about the viewer in the cut page, edit, fusion, and color pages as well. Because when we work with these other pages, we have a lot of different functionality that is available to us and some really powerful tools that are going to help speed up your workflow. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.